Good evening, good evening, and welcome to another beautiful Monday night Bible study here at St. Giragos Armenian Apostolic Church. We are blessed, excited, and happy to be here amongst brothers and sisters. We pray for all the brothers and sisters who are not here tonight, especially Brother Greg, whose blood pressure is not going down. So we pray that the Lord may have healing power upon him and have mercy upon him and give him a healing so a quick recovery so he can join us again next week that being said we are continuing our study in second samuel chapter 21 second samuel chapter 21 by the end of this month we will finish it god's willing because uh that that will be the end of king david and that being said let's pray heavenly father lord jesus thank you for this day O oh lord Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Thank you for the prison ministry today. Thank you for blessing everyone and everyone who's here. Father, may you decrease me and increase you. Let this teaching be all of you, not of me. Let the Holy Spirit take over this message and teach us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Uh, and we'll say hello, shout out to everybody around the world, Australia and everywhere else in Lebanon and all over there watching us. Just want to say hi to them all. And if you are watching us live, please like and share, like and share. So others in networking, friends and family also will be blessed by the teaching tonight. Open up your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 1. Last chapter we learned there was a rebellion that rose up against King David. But Joab was able to shut it down quickly. When Amasa, the other general, was not able to do so anything about it and Job also ended up killing Amasa if you remember that and so he, the Amasa was the general that uh, Absalom his son had uh, appointed and so finally the Joab got rid of him too so today we are going to continue and see the struggles and the rest of the things that's going on in the nation these are the last days of the king by the way it's you know it's getting older in age so 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 many things are going on so now we're going to see what else he's going to have to deal with so we only have a few chapters left, and God's willing, we'll be able to finish this Second Samuel by the end of March. Starting in April, we'll start a new book. That being said, let us read verse 1 of chapter 21, please. Now there was a fair night in the days of David for three years, years after year, and David inquired the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of the salt of his bloody horse he house, because he killed the Gibeonites. Gibeonites. Here we see the results of sin that was caused by Saul is catching up on the nation and the punishment is coming upon the land. God had told Joshua to wipe out entirely all the Canaanites, but the Gibeonites tricked Joshua, if you remember from the book of Joshua back then, uh, by signing a peace treaty. Remember the Gibeonites somehow came in under disguise that they came from far away even though they were right next door. And then they tricked Joshua into saying that, you know, they are far neighbors and they would like to support. Ended up to be that after Joshua had committed to, to keep them as a peace treaty among them and it turned out to be that they were Gibeonites who were right next door. But Gibeonites stayed as loyal uh, servants to the Israelites all those years, all right? So Joshua wiped out entirely Canaanites, but the Gibeonites tricked Joshua, but then they signed it to priesthood. But Saul, when he became king, he backslipped from it. He broke the treaty, so that penalty now, it's on the land. And when finally King David asked a question inquiring of the Lord, the answer is. So we're going to find out here what happened. So the thing was that King David went to the Lord after three years of this uh, uh, famine, the, the drought in the land. And he said, it is because, and then he wanted to know, why is there drought and what can we do? And the, and the Lord said, it's because of what Saul had done to the Gibeonites. So now the, the land, the nation has to pay the price. So with God, there's no tomorrow. One day is like a thousand years, thousand years is like one day. He will take care of things at his time, yes? So God can take care of things if, uh, today. Let's say somebody harmed you and you asked for the Lord for revenge for you. And what happens is sometimes that will happen maybe for another 50 years or 20 years or 10 years. Or it can happen next day or same minute. You never know how he does things and why he does it. In this situation, um, this, the, the land is drought. Three years, no rain. So, you know, people are relying on food. There's nothing is growing, so their farms are drying up. 
So uh, King went to ask the Lord, he says, why is this happening? What can we do? What's the problem? And the answer was, the Lord said, is because of what Saul had did to the Gibeonites. Now the Gibeonites, you have to make it straight with them. So King's like, okay, fine, no problem. Thank you for telling me. It took me a while, but let me go talk to the Gibeonites and see what they want so I can make this thing work better. Two to nine, Sister Roscoe. So the king called to the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection uh, to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And with what uh, shall I make atonement uh, that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said to him, We will have no silver or gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Then they answered uh, the king, As for the men who consumed us and Plotted against against us that we should be destroyed from remedy in any of the territories of Israel. Let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hand them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Matthew Roshet the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So the king took Armani and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiyah, whom she bore to Saul, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzilla, the Eholabite, and the deliverers them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the hill before the Lord. So they fell all seven together and were put to death in the day of harvest, in the first day in the beginning of barley harvest. Thank you. A lot of reading there, but it's, it's important. Good. So we see that house of Saul being judged for the sins of Saul. Now it's catching up on the whole family. After 50 years, seven of his grandsons are all being hung. So King David went to Gibeonites, just like he asked the Lord to do. And the Gibeonites, they said, listen, we don't want no money, no silver, no gold, nothing from Saul, nothing from, we don't harm anybody else in Israel. We don't want nothing. But we want seven people from his family. Seven. So we can hang them, and that way uh, we are clear. So, uh, all, you know, so now we see, after 50 years, 50 years, seven of his grandsons are, that are going to be hanging, you know, are being uh, here uh, for the sins that their grandfather had ca caused or committed towards the Gibeonites. Now, this grandson are being all hung. So sin will catch up with us as, uh, sooner or later. It will come to completion. He was supposed to deal with it back then, whether he dealt with it wrong or did not deal with it at all, now it's time, you know, and now it's surfacing. What happened is that he should have dealt with it back then, he didn't deal with it back then. Joshua messed up because he believed the Gibeonites, so they made a treaty. And then Saul, to make up for it, without, question, without asking the Lord, he decided on his own, this is what he's going to do. When there is a treaty, when he's at it, when God says you have to make, when your word is a word, that means if the nation of Israel had told anybody else that we will never attack you, they can never attack them, period. They cannot go back on that. See, the difference is with any other nation, they could say it, but then several years later they can do it. The nation of Israel, they cannot commit to something that they swear under God oath and then do it again, so they will have to get punished for it. So now they are being punished for it. So now we see, by there we see the uh, Mephibosheth. Who's Mephibosheth? Who remembers Mephibosheth? It's right here. 
Yes. That was uh, Jonathan's son. Yes, Jonathan's son being spared by the king of his promise because king had promised Jonathan to save his family. So whoever we have right now, we have, you know, Mephibosheth is the only son that was lived. So he was living in the king's palace. So he said, we cannot deliver Mephibosheth to, to these people, but all the, the other kids, they are going to. And this Barzillai, in case some of you are wondering, is not the same old man from the last chapter. This is the one of the grandkids of Saul. This Barzillai is not the same Barzillai that helped David and the people when they were on the other side of Jordan, okay? Because a lot of people might read Barzilla, they go, wait a minute, why are you killing Barzilla? Barzilla, that was an old man, 80 some year old Bar Barzilla. This is a young boy or young t 20s, whatever, you know. So these are the grandkids of Saul. Seven of them are being hung by the Gibeonites for to avenge for all the things that Saul had done in their life. Amen? Yeah, what you said about uh, them making uh, an oath to somebody under the name of the Lord, right. you know, from your God. God doesn't want you to do that. He doesn't want you to take your oaths and attach him to it. But if you do, <laughs> right. If you do, you cannot get out. Don't make a note. Don't promise God nothing that you can't keep. That's why I say, I don't make any promises with God because I know I'm a human being. I'm not going to keep any promises. So if I make a promise to God, I most likely will yeah. fall short. So I don't want to answer to him because he will hold you up on it. So he's very serious about that and I'm not going to that department. So I'll leave that alone. Yes, when the Gibeonites came. Yes, they see them, yeah, because they were wearing a terry clothes and they had, you know, bread that was already molded. So they said that we've been traveling all these days and months. They weren't, they just came next, you know, from the town around. So, but the, the, the Joshua and them, they didn't know. So they believed them, then they made a treaty, and then they found out that these people are right next door. But the bottom line is they made that commitment. They swore under to God, God, under God, yes. That's what it was. When and God got involved, told, don't yeah. do that. right. That's what the problem is. Good job. So let's write these names. Ladies, who's writing uh, information, get your pens ready. Armoni, it's not as Armani, the, the nice suits. These are Armoni. Armoni means belonging to the palace. Armoni means belonging to the palace. Mephibosheth, we all know, exterminating the idol. Mephibosheth, exterminating the idol. Rispa, Rispa is hot coal, paved, hot coal paved, Rispa. Aya, Aya is a little hawk, Aya is a little hawk. Mikael or Michael, stream of water, stream, but it's not as Mikael, it's not, you know, who is like God, it's not Mikael, it's Michael, it's the stream of water. And Adriel, 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 my shepherd is God. Adriel, my shepherd is God. Aswat hobi vise. Aur amunni. Aswat der ne gam hobi pne. Yes, good job. Barzillai, made of iron, as we know. Barzillai. Last one is Meholatite. Meholatite. Meholatite means dancing. Meholotai, yalla elek baratik. Dancing, all right? So this is a little message, if I, I think at least I saw it, and hopefully somebody else. If any questions, anybody missed the names, I will repeat it if you want. Sister Catherine, you got it? Silva, you got it? Yes? Meholotai, dancing. Brazil, I made of iron. Adriel, my shepherd is God. Michael, stream of water. Aya, a little hawk. Rispa, hot coal paved. Mephibosheth, exterminating the idol. Hmm? You said hot coal paved? Paved, yes. Like a mosaic pavement, it's paved, yes. Bel uh, and Armoni, or Armani, no Armoni, I'm just kidding. Belonging to the palace. So here I see it, it's uh, the message from these, this particular group of names. Belonging to the palace, exterminating the idol, Hot coal was paved. A little hawk by the stream of water, as my shepherd is God, made of iron, was dancing. 
looks nice. I don't know, but it looks good. And let's move to um, 10 to 14. Gibboa. And 14. So he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from there. And they gathered the bones of those who had been made. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son in the country of Benjamin and Zila, in the tomb of Kish his father. So they performed all that the king commanded, and after that God heeded the prayer of the Lord. Thank you. The bodies of Saul's grandsons were left hanging on the tree, all seven of them. Um, by the way, seven is a number of completion. So we see that completion had happened. Finally, closing is coming in. One of the mothers stood by for six months, one of the mothers, six months watching the decay pl take place, fighting off all the birds, chasing away the animals of prey. So this mom sat there, watching these dead bodies for six months, making sure that no birds come and eat them and no animals at night come and eat them. She's, she's protecting her son's remains. So when David heard this about this, about this uh, lady and this mom, he ordered the bodies cut down and the bones taken along with Saul's and Jonathan's all to be buried together. So he's like, you know what, enough. Let's just bring them all together. Let's bury them all together. You know, including their grandfather and great grandfather, the whole nine yards. So we see here the the zeal of a mother. You know, even after her son's death, that she's sitting over there and protecting his dead body. You know, from the, from the elements of what's going on with the animals and so on. But then we also see the passion, compassion of King David, even though it wasn't his thing to do, but he had no other choice. So that he made sure that they bring down the, the bodies and, and he went and got the bones of Saul and Jonathan and buried them all together as a family in a family tomb. Very important, we see that here, and in the end in chapter 14, what did it say? It says in the 14, uh, or verse 14 I should say, and so they performed all that the king commanded and after that God heeded the prayer of the land. So now the Lord says, okay, the land can go back to being norm because the price of their deceitfulness of Saul's, you know, what he did was paid. See, God avenged Gibeonites. Gibeonites are not even his people. But why would God avenge Gibeonites, not his people? Yeah. Huh? Yes, because they promised under his name and they didn't keep the promise. So you see, God will avenge everyone. Whether you are his people or not, God is very fair God. He makes sure what is fair is right is right. Gibeonites were not his people, but because what they were promised under his name and his people did not do it, so eventually time came that they had to pay the price. Always. We cannot, no way for us to question it. You see it right here. He didn't come to the rescue of the Israelites. He came to the rescue of Gibeonites. They're not his people. But God says, uh-uh, you did wrong to them. It doesn't matter. For example, Arsene will do something with the neighbors. And he gets in trouble. But he doesn't, but nobody knows. The dad doesn't know about this. Dad doesn't know about what the situation. Ten years later, dad finds out that Arson did something with the neighbor that he wasn't supposed to. 
What the dad will do, Arsen, after 10 years, will get a nice spanking or whatever, some kind of a punishment, <laughs> most likely a spanking. But the reason is not because dad prefers the neighbor over his son, no. No, the neighbor's neighbor, maybe he doesn't even like the neighbors. That's not the point. The point is that what his son did was wrong and he does not stand for that. So the people around the neighborhood will look at your family and your home and say, you know what? These people are straight because they keep the law right regardless of what happened. See? All right. Well, you want to remember that, Arson. Yeah, remember that, Arson. So, uh, read 15 and 16. When the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants went, uh, with him went down and fought against the Philistines, and David grew faint. And Ishbi Beno, who was one of the sons of the giant, the weight whose bronze spear was 300 shekels, who was bearing a new sword, though, uh, though he could kill David. Thought he could kill uh, yeah. David. This man's spear apparently weighed 30 pounds. Very powerful person. When King David felt faint or passed out on the battlefield, he almost lost his head. He almost got killed by this uh, Philistine who they were at war with. Ishbush, uh, what is his name is? Ishbi, Ishbi Benod, Ishbi Benod. He sits in the high places. By the way, his name is Ishbi Benod, is he sits in the high places. But it's important to see what's going on over here. David now is coming as an older man now. You see, he's on the battlefield now, he's falling. He's fainting, he's passing out, and you know, his blood pressure is not staying normal. <laughs> so things are happening to him. So, so, but luckily, let's find out what happened. 17 to 22, Bigfoot. For Abishai, the son of... Actually, agreed 17 and 18. Abishai, the son of Zeruai, surrounded him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go home no more, not out with us to battle, that thou quenchest not the life of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gog. Then uh, Sibakai, 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 Hushatite, to Sap, which was the son of the giant. Okay, Bill, 1920. Again, there was a war at God with the Philistines, where Elharim, <laughs> the son of Jerah, or, or Reagan, the Bethlehemite Beth um, killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Yet again, there was a war at God, where there was a man of great stature, who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also was born to the giant. Sister Captain, 21-22. Now we're realizing something interesting here. There's a lot of giants still in existence. These are all the remnants or descendants or leftovers from the Nephilim times. If you remember, uh, who was the first giant that we, we faced earlier? Goliath, right? He's from Goth too. So Goliath was a giant. So these are, uh, they, you know, so these are also m other people from the same town, from the same city, from the same country, from the same neighborhood, per se. Also giants, and uh, and then they were they were uh, several different giants here, uh, and then some. This one particular guy had six fingers uh, on each hand and six toes on his feet. So these are all still the remnants of the Nephilim that we had from before, not as massive, not as big, but pretty much they were, so there was a ser serious battle was going on one after another, after another, after another. 
They come to this, the king's rescue and they kill the Philistines in several different battles against the giants. What does the giant stand for in the Bible? Obstacles, Obstacles problems, tribulations, troubles that we face in our life. So you see, you know, dear brothers and sisters, the Christian walk does not necessarily get easier. There are giants all the way to the end. There's always going to be, here we go, to, uh, King David's getting an old man. He's still fighting giants. The giants are always going to be there. The giants are going to be a problem. The problem is this, or the solution is this. You have two ways to deal with your giants. You can deal with them early or you can deal with them later. You can deal with them early, put them out of the way so you don't have to deal with them later. Or you could be like David, passive aggressive. He puts things off, he pushes away, he doesn't deal with them, but now he's getting old, now he's on the battlefield, he's passing out, he's almost going to die, he's gonna get killed by the enemy because he didn't deal with them properly in the first days. So these are the kind of things in our life too, the same thing. We all face the same kind of situations in our life. We face that we have troubles, we have situations, we have tribulations, we can deal with them now or leave them for later. So, you know, those are the, it's depending on how the person is and what you do. Now, it's usually said it's better to deal with them early when you are younger, when you can withstand the pressure. There's a saying from my mom and my dad from the old days, they said, there's an old, this is young, this man asked God, and God asked this man, when do you want your troubles? Now or later? So the troubles are always going to be there. The option is you want your troubles now when you're young, you can deal with them, or you want them when you're older then. So there's, there's, it's, there's ups and balances in those, in both. If you deal with them when you're younger, you're stronger, you would stand better, you deal with them, it's gone, even though you know, it'll make you a mess while you're young. But then you're older age, you don't have to deal with it anymore. Wisdom. You're older age, you live and you enjoy your life and, and you, know, you just go to your grave relaxed. Or you bypass it all in a young age, in you of your life, and then you pay for it later when you're older. So it's up to you how, which one you take it because it's usually harder when you're older to be in hardship. It's better to be in hardship when you're younger. Especially it comes to financials, for example. It's always better you can be hungry or broke when you're young. Because you're young, you can withstand it. You can eat burhul, you can eat uh, whatever. You can eat each every day and you survive. It will cost you five bucks a week. All week you can eat each. Five dollars a week, you're, you're covered. Two packs of bread and a, and a pound of burhul and tomato paste and salt and pepper. You're good to go for a whole week, five dollars. You're hungry, you're full. You cannot even move and drink some water. And then you become a balloon. So without fat. Now, this is, that's what it is. You can deal with it when you're younger, easier. But when you're older, when you're older and you suddenly, God forbid, you lose your job and this and that, everything else. And it's harder to withstand the problem when you're older. It's harder to struggle, to, to go through struggles when you're older. It's harder to deal with situations of your financial situations when you're older. It's better to deal with them when you are younger. That's why these sayings are whatnot. But anyway, so but now... But that doesn't mean that you're not going to have troubles. You're still going to have troubles all the way to the end. But we're talking about the... In this case, he's got a lot of giants. But the giants were there again because he put them out. He put them away. He didn't face them early. Remember, David was also living in Gath for many years. He was under their protection. So it kind of like for him, I can't go and fight these people and kill them. But now he has to deal with them because now they're attacking. So, but it would have been easier when David was younger. But now David is getting old and he's on the battlefield and he's got these young giants with 30 pound spears throwing at him. Ah, it's a tough one. Let's go over some of these names. There's a lot of good names here. A lot of names, actually. Very interesting. Ishbi Benob. He sits in the high places. Abishai, father of gifts.
ዘሩ አያ ዘሩ ያ ዘሩ አያ ዘሩ አያ ዘሩ አያ ዘሩ አያ means troubled pierced by god sibekai yehova intervened or yeah yehova intervened sibekai hushatait quickly hushatait quickly so this group of names will read he sits in high places father of gifts trouble pierced by god and jehovah intervened quickly so he sits in high places again speaking about lord jesus christ speaking sitting in high places father of all gifts but then troubled and pierced by god that means he was crucified for our sins so he had to be judged by the by the but jehovah intervened quickly so his he wasn't on there too long so he was quickly intervened to be saved so this is a this is a nice message from that last group of name saf saf s a p h tall preserver means tall preserver it fits for the guy who was a giant el hanan el hanan whom god graciously gave el hanan whom god graciously graciously gave yare oregim yare oregim or jari oregim in english but it's not english is yare oregim forests of weavers forest of weavers i think in khid andar bethlehemite of course house of bread galiat means took captive galiat took captive bethlehem or bethlehemite house of bread gitite wine press gitite wine press jonathan the lord gave shimia sama basically in arabic samaha actually in arabic shimia samaha means something heard you heard of something samaha shimia now let's read and see if this gives us anything tall preserver whom god graciously gave forests of weavers and house of bread took captive the wine press that the lord gave something was heard i don't know but that's all i got all right so what do we learn today in our study of chapter 21 of second samuel don't run off today you're supposed to do There you go. Good job. Yes. Anybody else? Pretty good. Very good. CC badge for that. Anybody There's else? Consequences of sin. There's consequences of sin. Yes, and you will always catch up. Yeah. The consequences of sin unfortunately will always catch up. They fall on the children like when we started. Mm -hmm. Yes. Something was done and now the grandchildren are suffering. Yes, it could fall. It could fall on the children also, or children could be part of the, the you know, paying the price of your sins. You know, get involved in your situation. So generations of families cannot seem to get out of poverty or out of crime. Right. Of all these things because the, somewhere along the line, somebody lives their life a certain way, and. It's being passed down, so it's not the same as the both, but it's really for real people. It's like, well, wait a minute, everything you do in your life is not just your life; it's going to affect your children because exactly. people look to their parents for their their value system and their worldview, and they can go on for generations. Anybody else? Silva. Um, I think there's similar to what we learned of the Antichrist chapter when we try to avoid confrontation or trying to deal with um, uncomfortable situations and trying to avoid them in person, but without the burden of the divorce and the expenses. 
David's life seems to be this whole thing. It's he's a, a nice man, loving man, cares about everyone, cares about everyone too much. So he doesn't want to cause any kind of confrontations with anybody, including his own children and everything else. So he puts everything off. The result has been with his children, it was such a big mess, everybody's killing each other, and the next thing you know, they're after the kingdom, after him and everything else. So we realize that here again, still the Saul's uh, sins are catching up with his family, that even the nation is paying for it, including David. And So all these things in this small chapter has so much for us to learn that we should always evaluate all things um, while we are facing it, yeah. evaluate it, look at it, put it on the scale, evaluate it, deal with it some way, somehow, whether you turn it off completely, you let it go, or you deal with it and you let it, you know, and you close it up and you, you, you fix it. So we cannot just sit and expect something. As the Bible says, it's something good cannot come from evil or from bad. Things are all chaos. If it, you cannot expect a, a beautiful result from a car crash, it's going to be cars crashed. They're not. It's, it's, so the same as the universe. If it crashes, it's going to destroy everything. It's not going to make a new beautiful planet like we have. So contrary to some of the beliefs of the Big Bang and whatnot. So very important we understand that we have to face our struggles as it comes. <laughs> And deal with it, God bless you, and deal with it as, as needed. So it doesn't catch up with us and multiply to the end too much. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for everyone who's watching us. Thank you for everyone who's here. Thank you for all the study, O oh Lord. Thank you for giving us the wisdom. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come to you and hear from you and learn from you. Father, you're such an amazing, graceful God. May you keep giving us the wisdom to deal with all our obstacles as necessary. Give us the courage to face obstacles and give us the wisdom to deal with others. Give us patience to love others. Give us your love and your peace so we can be with others. Father, ultimately, we just say thank you for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for watching and see you on Wednesday. God bless you.